Today we're testing out the new Hisalus MPS3K. And this has a massive 4,500 watt hour battery and a low frequency inverter. And these two features make it extremely heavy. This thing is 130 pounds. And the inverter's continuous output is rated for 3,000 watts. So this is mainly designed to work with power tools, motors, well pumps, things like that. Oh boy. And it's so heavy that I could not bring it into the lab table. I can't lift 130 pounds onto that table. It's just too much for me by myself. I did try though. So on this side, we have a battery expansion connection, but this cannot be connected to lead acid or lithium iron phosphate. It has to match the voltage of the internal battery. So I'm guessing Hyslis will have their own external battery option where you connect here. Next, we have the solar input with an Anderson connector. And this can handle a max voltage open circuit of 150, and you can connect up to 1500 watt array. And then we have the car charger DC input. So if you want to charge from a 12 or a 24 volt alternator you can connect it right here and on this side we have the inverter AC output and each receptacle can handle 15 amps and then down here we have circuit breakers for the battery solar AC input and AC output when you first get the unit you want to turn it on by flipping the circuit breakers up and then we have a USB and a 12 volt DC output and down here is a terminal block for the AC input and the AC output so if you wish to supply a small panel or if you want to connect a grid for the AC charger, this is where you do it. And that's pretty much it, so let's test it. And this is the array that I connected to the unit. It produces a maximum of 120 volts open circuit and a max wattage of 1,200. And the Hyslist comes with an MC4 to Anderson connector. So the solar panels connect over here and then you plug it in. Now the solar is connected, but the screen did not turn on, and it does that. That's how it's designed to work. Whether there's power coming in or not by the solar array, this will stay off. It will simply always charge if the solar panels are connected. But if you want to turn on the inverter, you have to press the on and off button for two seconds. And once the screen's on, you can see that the solar panel is charging the battery, and the battery is producing electricity for the AC output. And if you press down, you can see how much power we are getting from our solar array. And it shows 19 watts. Wow, there's no sun on those panels, so that's pretty impressive actually. But again, whether this screen is on or off, it will continue to charge. I verified that with my current meter. And after charging for two days, we're at 100% battery. So right now it's probably balancing a little bit or just topping off that final bit of absorption. But yeah, let's test it and do a capacity test. And we have our trusty air conditioner, so let's hook it up. And because this is a low frequency inverter, we should be able to run like three of these. So let's turn it on and do our test. There we go, now the compressor's on and the fan's on high. We're pulling 950 watts continuous, which is almost a 0.2C rate for this battery size, which makes it perfect for doing a capacity test. So we'll come back in a few hours and see what happens. So this thing's been running all day and I wasn't even here when it disconnected, so let's give it some power and see what the results are. It says four, no way, 4.1 kilowatt hours. Either the inverter efficiency is really high or this battery is larger than what it's advertised. Or maybe it's advertised properly. This is pretty strange. So 4,100 divided by 4,500. That gives us 91%. That is very impressive for a solar generator. Usually it's 75 to 85. I've never seen anything come close to this. Now we're charging the high solace with my solar power system in the trailer and it's pulling a consistent 950 to 1000 watts which means it will be fully charged in 4.7 hours and if you max out the solar input it can charge in three hours so considering the size of this battery bank very impressive numbers here but charging from an alternator would take a very long time charging from a 12 volt source would take 37 and a half hours and charging from a 24 volt alternator would take 18.75 hours. But I usually tell people to avoid charging their solar system battery with the alternator. It just takes too long and it costs more money in gas. And the charging system of your vehicle is not designed to charge deep cycle batteries. So you're better off not doing it at all. Battery's fully charged and we're going to add 3000 watts with two heat guns. All right, both of our meters are at zero. We're at 96% of its output capacity. 
Battery's at 100%. So we have 1,480 over here and 1,475 over here. And so far, so good. So we'll come back in like an hour and a half and this should be depleted. The test is now done and this thing is pretty warm. And both meters agree with 1.87 kilowatt hours. If you add those together, we get 3.74. That gives us 83% of the rated capacity, which at this discharge rate is very consistent with our last results. So let's charge it up very quickly now. So we have 688 watts coming through the solar array and 1000 watts coming through the AC input. And the solar is still at max output, so that means we can charge at max rate from the solar and the AC input. We're charging at 1730 watts, which means we'll be fully charged in two and a half hours, which is very fast, especially for this size battery. That means we're charging at like a 0.4 C. Pretty impressive. <laughs> So this is high voltage and I do not recommend my viewers doing this at home. Over here we have the inverter circuit that feeds into the low frequency inverters transformer. So these are lower voltage, high current, and then on the other side we have the high voltage, low current that feeds the circuit breaker and the AC output. And then over here the solar input feeds a circuit breaker for the main disconnect and then feeds into this MPPT board. I know that because we have some pretty large inductors and capacitors on this side. And the MPPT board has its own cooling fan. And so we have air that comes in from both sides and then goes out of the main fan out of the case on this side. And the connections look really good. The solder joints look nice. They reach the proper temperature. Every single connection has heat shrink and it's a well-made device. And this transformer is pretty big for a three kilowatt output. I bet this could handle a massive surge of like eight to 10 kilowatts. All of these boards actually look proprietary. There's nothing that's like thrown in here like the other one that I opened up. On the other Hysolus I opened up, they were using third party power supplies and other things. This one looks like they designed and built it from the ground up. I also tested the DC output voltage of the cigarette lighter at a low and a high state of charge and I found out that it's regulated. Which would make sense considering the nominal voltage of this battery. You need to have a step down converter for that anyways. But yeah, looks pretty good on the inside. Again, do not try this at home. There are so many conductors here that could kill me, it's not even funny. These LF inverters are very easy to work on if something were to break. You could easily swap out FETs or the transformer or whatever. And I'm not gonna go into the battery. I have a data sheet and I'm gonna post it below in the description of this video if you wanna learn more about the cells that they're using. This thing's just so heavy and I'd have to take apart these boards to get to the battery. But it is easy to open, that only took a few minutes. But how many solar generators have a serviceable low frequency inverter? This is one of the very few. Please let me know if you guys know of another option on the market that's similar to this because I can't think of any. So the Hysol is passed our initial testing, but we need to do long term testing to see if everything works well. So I'm going to run my air conditioner in the trailer all day long off of my LV6548 and we're going to push 100 kilowatt hours through the Hysolus. And if it can pass that test, I will give it the thumbs up. So if you don't mind the large weight of this unit, it might be good for you. There wasn't that much for me to complain about. Everything just worked. Now the next question I have is the battery expansion. I don't know what they're gonna have, how large that's gonna be, and how much it's gonna cost, but there's not much else to say about that unit. Um, it's a very simple unit, just a couple inputs and outputs and very powerful. I think the best use case, as I mentioned earlier, is RVs, vans, work trucks. If you have power tools like a mitter saw, this is perfect for you. And possibly the marine crowd, because this is a serviceable LF inverter. And the biggest downside I can think of is the weight. But for a lot of you guys, that might not matter at all. And I think the best result that we had was the first capacity test at the AC output. Being able to pull 90% of the capacity from an AC receptacle on a solar generator is very impressive. And I can't think of a single other generator that I've tested that had that good of results. And Heisless plans to make this unit with lithium iron phosphate, 
but it will be very, very heavy. I'm guessing it will be like 150, maybe 145 pounds. And I know some of my viewers will not buy it because it does not have lithium iron phosphate. I would personally pay more for a lithium iron phosphate based system, even if it weighs more. But they are using high quality cells. Check out the data sheet below. Also the lithium iron phosphate cells that they're using are CATL, and they're the ones that established the partnership with Tesla when Lycian and other lithium iron phosphate manufacturers could not establish that partnership. From what I've been told about Hyslis, they're in the inverter business and now they're making solar generators. So they have the experience with the inverters, but I'm not sure about the batteries. On the last Hyslis, one of the positive conductors, the wire was touching the negative terminal of the battery. And if there was lots of vibration, it could break through the insulation. And they actually redesigned the pack after I complained about that. And they actually have pictures of this new one that they sent me and it looks really good inside as well. So they're new to the game, but they're learning quickly. And it seems like everything that they are presenting works as advertised, but only time will tell if these systems work long term. So come back in a couple months and I'll have some results on that. And having it in my trailer means I almost have 20 kilowatt hours of capacity. So that's really exciting. And I'm going to be making a massive solar array in about a week. So we're going to have a seriously large system out there very soon. I'm hoping I can get like 6,000 watts of solar. And yeah, 20 kilowatt hours of battery, that will be so cool. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. There will be an affiliate link below, but this is a new company. So if you buy this and something goes wrong, I want you guys to tell me about it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.